In this lesson, we're going to talk about lighting inside of Stingray. All right, so in this particular lesson, I want to show you how to set up the lighting for our game. Um, if you were trying to load the levels, or the uh, 10 underscore begin level, and you didn't see anything showing up, make sure that you don't have uh, a search active here and make sure that your filters have been cleared. You can click on clear filters to get rid of that search if you need to. All right, so open up this file and you'll see it right here. And what I wanna do is I want to go over to entities in the Explorer and I wanna click on this midday shading environment. The first thing that you'll wanna do whenever you are working with your lighting is set up your global lighting first. So under the global lighting, you'll see that I have a sky dome map. Right now it's using this clear blue sky. And for this particular game and this level, I want things to take place at night. Now the camera angle that we're gonna be using for this game is always gonna be kind of a top down um, type of view. Some would say isometric, but it, I would kind of argue that. I don't want that to be an argument really. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get rid of the skybox because I really don't need it. I'm not gonna see it anyway. Um, so instead of getting rid of the skybox completely, I'm actually going to browse for a different one. So I'm gonna say skybox, I'm gonna type that in, and I'm gonna use this skybox black. Hitting okay on that will get rid of that skybox, and we're already getting something of a little bit different uh, result, but we still have this really intense light in the scene. So what I wanna do now is I wanna go ahead and select the light source that's in the scene, and this is the default light source. And we're gonna go down to the properties and we're gonna choose the light component. Now with the light component selected, you can change the type. In this case, it's a directional light and I wanna keep it that way. And then we could change the color. So if you click on that, it'll bring up your color picker. Let's go ahead and change it to something kind of like this lighter blue and hit okay. Then I'm gonna take the intensity, and I'm gonna draw that down to about 0.2 and hit enter. Now we're getting something that looks a little bit more like a night scene, and perhaps there's a, a big bright moon in the sky right now. So to me, that feels better. Now, you also have a couple of other options along with this. You have cast shadows and you have baked. If you want this light source to cast shadows, um, as it is right now, you can see the silhouette of the, the building and the lamppost, you'll want to make sure that that is checked. If you turn it off, it's going to get rid of that. Now by having that turned off, you are going to save some computation power. So if you're developing for the mobile platform, you might want to consider turning off cast shadows. Um, another thing is baked. Now you could still, you could cast these shadows and then you could bake these shadows down into the texture of the world and that would also save in computation. Um, if you have it unchecked like it is now, it will Obviously, it's going to take up a little bit more power of the platform, and it's also going to cast shadows on any dynamic objects that are in the scene. So if your character's running around, it's going to cast shadows. If that's not important to you, I would suggest checking baked. Okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because I, I really don't want it. I would like to see these cast shadows as we're not really targeting the mobile platform. So now that this is set up, We've got that light. Let's talk about some other sources of light in our scene. Another source of light that you'll have is going to be from your emissive materials. So you can see here that we get this glow. Now it's not really casting any light out of this. So as you can see like right here, we're getting this bloom off of the windows of our disco and off of our sign but it's not actually casting any light onto the ground from that. So that's something that we'll probably just go ahead and leave, uh, but you do have emissive materials at your disposal to create something that looks like light. Now another source of light that I have in my scene is this lamp post. I wanna show you the lamp post because it's set up in a very special way. So let's go to models and props. Inside of props, I want you to double click on the lamp and this is going to bring up your unit editor. 
So now that the unit editor has come up, let me go ahead and expand it. You'll see that the unit, the lamp itself, is made up of a couple, couple of different components. We have the lamp mesh, which is denoted by this blue icon. And then we have this light snap point, which is denoted by this green asterisk. This snap point was created in Maya. So if you want to see exactly how that was created, you could send this prop over to Maya and inspect it that way. Now the snap point is positioned right up here at the top where this light is. I'm using that snap point that I put in inside of Maya to use as a positioning or a locator for this light that I've added as a component. So let me show you how that was done. Let's right click on this and I'm going to delete it off. So you'll see that that light has now disappeared. Let's select the light snap point. I'm going to go to create and light. You'll see that that has now been created and it's put into the same position as that light snap point. Now with the light selected you can change its type. So let's change it to spotlight and then you could start to modify some of its options. First thing do I want this to cast shadows? Yes, I want it to cast shadows. The start and the end, meaning where it starts, do we want it to start at the source or do we want it to start outside of the source? It, right here, that's good. So I'm going to leave the start at zero. And then the end determines how far that light will travel. So five meters is pretty good. If you want to set it up to be a little bit longer, you can set it to eight, totally up to you. Now by setting up the end to be a little bit longer, your fall off is going to take a little bit longer. So the light will look a little bit more bright on the ground. So I'm going to leave it at 5 for right now. Now you also have an exponent that you could set that up with. I'm going to leave it at 1. Then you can adjust your spotlight angle. I'm going to set this to 60 because I want that to be a little bit more wide. And then finally, you have the light bounce. I'm going to leave it set to default on this. So now that that is all set up, we just need to save this out and take a look at it inside of our scene. So I'm going to hit Control S to save it. And then we'll go back into Stingray. And it doesn't really look like anything has changed for this, but it has a little bit. You can see that the angle is a little bit different. Okay, It's going a little bit behind the lamppost. Now, if you're finding that you don't have any intensity to your light, what you'll do is you'll select the unit inside of the level and you can come in and you can inspect the components that are on that unit. So here you can see the lamp or the light of that. So if I select that light component, I can come in and change this unit's individual parameters or properties. So the intensity right now is set to 400. I could tell it to not cast shadows or to cast shadows. Um, on a per unit basis. Now if you wanted to change all of them at the same time we can't do that right now as far as intensity goes but if you wanted to change let's say the fall off or even the spotlight angle for all of the objects you could do that by double clicking on it and going into the unit editor. By changing this it will change all of the units that are currently in your scene so it will update that. Alright so now that we have our light all set up and we've taken a look at all of those and how they work, I want to move on into our next lesson.